This is your Weather Extreme video for Sunday, September the 30th, uh, last day of September for 2012. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters, and there's a moral to what I did yesterday, and last night I upgraded my computer to uh, Mountain Lion, and you shouldn't do that in the middle of a weekend because then when you get to the uh, Weather Extreme video, guess what? Things don't always just work completely perfectly after an upgrade. Well, anyway, you know, because things got to get upgraded. All right, let's take a look at what's going on today. And there's a look at the surface map. Uh, the uh, front that kind of moved through our area yesterday is uh, sunk into South Alabama. The surface low is over East Texas and expected to progress our way uh, during the day today and into Monday. And in the upper atmosphere, we have a closed low over southeast Oklahoma, supporting that surface pattern. Temperature-wise, we're sitting primarily in the 60s with a few cooler temperatures, um, upper uh, 50s for the most part in northeast Alabama. And of course, uh, the clouds and the rain are creating a good deal of those cooler temperatures for us. And it's likely that we're not going to see much of a temperature range today with highs expected to be in the upper 70s. And of course, uh, you can see that big rain shield uh, with the surface low. Rain's the big story for the next couple of days. Rain uh, could be heavy at times and um, flooding might become an issue. I don't think it's going to be widespread, but with the um, more intense thunderstorms and uh, heavier rains, we could see some flash flooding issues, and that's something we need to be alert to. While this is a five-day QPF forecast, of course, much of our rain comes Sunday and Monday, and then we see the rain diminishing on Tuesday, so it looks like, uh, and this only goes through uh, Thursday evening, so the next shot doesn't come until uh, the weekend. Slight risk for severe weather across uh, parts of southwest Alabama, the southern half of Mississippi, and the northeast, uh, pardon me, the southeast part of Louisiana. Uh, that slight risk area uh, extends uh, for day two, goes into Alabama and the uh, western, oh, well, almost half of Georgia and the northwest Florida panhandle area. And then on day three, we drop back to a sea text as the surface low uh, edges up into uh, the, the eastern Ohio River Valley and certainly uh, gets out of our way, and we see the weather diminishing for us. In the tropics, uh, we have Nadine, uh, that I am convinced is related to the Energizer Bunny, because Nadine has been around for a long, long time, and looks like it's going to stay with us, at least for much of the upcoming week. But again, except for the Azores out there, not a threat to any land areas. All right, here's the... Uh, uh, where we're going to go to the 06 GFS model run. But before we do, I want to look at the sounding from the Shelby County Airport, and there it is. And as we noted yesterday, it's likely to become saturated. Now, remember, this was last night, and indeed we did have a little bit of a dry layer between about seven and 800 millibars, but and that may be wiped out in this morning's sounding, but indeed uh, we do have uh, saturation. That kind of goes against severe weather, but indeed, uh, and also the lapse rates uh, are just kind of marginal. But there's some changes coming as that surface low approaches, so we'll talk about those in just a minute. All right, here's the 060 GFS model run. And there's our surface low that's expected to come across Louisiana today and into... Uh, the uh, northern sections of Alabama and Mississippi on uh, Monday. And, of course, Monday looks like it's going to be our big day. All right, so what's likely to happen on Monday? Well, uh, the first thing is uh, let's take a look at precipitable water. And this is for the 24-hour forecast, so this would be at midnight tonight. And, uh, indeed, uh, pardon me, uh, it'll be at 1 a.m., but uh, indeed, we have a good deal of precipital water, and those values in the uh, pinks and purples there are over two inches. So indeed, okay, the moisture is in place. Cape-wise, it looks like this could be one of those situations with a relatively low cape situ situation and high shear situation. So there's the cape values projected from the GFS for 18Z on Monday. And yeah, they're certainly respectable, 500. They're not hugely dramatic, but they are respectable. So we can't rule out the possibility of um, some severe thunderstorms, uh, perhaps more in a linear fashion. But also, if we do develop any discrete cells out ahead of the cold front, then we've got issues with that and they may rotate because of the shear. And the shear values, uh, once again, not humongous, 
but uh, they're they're certainly up there, approaching 300 for the uh, storm relative humicity. Hum- ah, storm relative helicity. Ah. All these terms. Okay, so anyway, the bottom line is we do have some risk, and that is why SPC has outlook things. But there's also some factors that are against it. So it's, it, I wouldn't say it's especially marginal. Now, there is some risk that if we do have tornadoes, they're likely to be brief because uh, the shear and low cape environment uh, is not going to produce long-lived uh, thunderstorms. All right, back to the 06Z GFS model run. This is for Tuesday. The surface low is up into Kentucky on Tuesday, and as, as we see here, the rain begins to diminish for us as we see improving weather. By Wednesday... The closed low is approaching uh, or in the vicinity of Chicago, and the surface low is up over, um, oh, pretty much uh, up into the eastern Ohio River Valley and diminishing quite rapidly as the upper feature becomes uh, less uh, distinct. Uh, You can see that the feature, the upper feature, becomes more of an open trough on Thursday. And then on Friday, we're simply under Uh, a rather broad trough over much of the eastern two-thirds of the country. And what that means for us is a cold front might be approaching. But as you can tell from this, the moisture is somewhat limited. The Gulf never fully opens up. So I think Friday is still going to be dry. Uh, On Saturday, we see that the main energy has rotated through the trough and is uh, up over New York. And so what does that mean for us? Well, uh, while we see thicknesses dropping over the Great Lakes and cooler air coming in, you see there's very little moisture. So it's one of those things that as the cold front comes through, yeah, we'll probably see some clouds. I almost guarantee the clouds, but Saturday, yeah, slight risk of some showers, but that's about it. Sunday, we're still in uh, good condition with... um, dry weather. And then let's go out into Monday. And the point I want to make here is that the thicknesses continue to drop slightly. So it looks like some cooler weather. Now, verging out into voodoo country, and uh, we have uh, some changes coming. We get back under a ridge around the 12th of October. So some dry weather in there and perhaps even a little bit warmer. Yeah, once again, maybe getting up into the lower 80s or so. But then We see another weather system coming at us around the 15th of October, Ides of October. I don't think that's important, but anyway, the middle of October. And we uh, we have a trough, and that's another wet system that could give us uh, some rain. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in to the Weather Extreme video. James Spann should be back with the next edition first thing tomorrow morning. In the meantime, I hope that your Sunday is a good one. And stay tuned to the blog for updates on how this whole weather scenario is going to unfold. Again, I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Have a great day and Godspeed. Thank you for trusting us to be your number one source for news in all of central Alabama. In back-to-back ratings periods, more people watched ABC 3340 than any other station in Birmingham.